Siddhartha Buddha reached Mahapari Nirvana and left this earth, or more simplistically died, around 483 at the age of 80. It was believed that he passed away from food poisoning and was cremated in northeast India on a pyre of sandalwood. Before the process was complete, Buddha's disciples began arguing over who would keep portions of his ashes and bones. Amidst the squabble, one of his favorite disciples, a woman named Kima, grabbed a single upper canine tooth from the flames. Following the cremation, that single tooth became known as Buddha's only remaining intact body part. Kima took it to the Hindu king Brahma Datta in the southeastern coastal kingdom of Kalinga. For more than 800 years, the tooth remained in the capital city, Dantapuram, which translates to Tooth City. During the 4th century, the Hindu king Pandu ordered for the tooth to be destroyed on a bed of hot charcoals, despite the artifact's overwhelming power to convert even a loyal Raja and his army to Buddhism. The tooth survived the ordeal, however, and King Pandu eventually caved to its persuasive powers and accepted the teachings of Buddhism. Legend has it that anyone who possesses the tooth has the divine right to rule. Naturally, therefore, the tooth was fought over many more times throughout history. In 1268, it was smuggled into the Sri Lankan city of Kandy. Then, in 1560, the tooth was stolen along with other valuables by Portuguese Christian colonizers. It was ordered to be destroyed by a Catholic archbishop and once again survived, this time by magically reappearing in Kandy, where it remains to this day, minus being briefly smuggled during an invasion by British forces. The tooth permanently resides within the Dalada Maligawa, or Temple of the Tooth. The foundation stone forms the foundation for Temple Mount, also known as the Noble Sanctuary, a place in Jerusalem that is considered highly sacred by the religions of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. At first glance, the foundation stone is nothing more than a slab of limestone. However, for centuries, this seemingly inconsequential stone slab has been the site of much warfare, controversy, and debate. The foundation stone is where Muhammad ascended and where all the world's fresh water originated according to Islam tradition. There is a well beneath the stone that's rumored to be bottomless, and legend holds that all souls go there to be judged. According to Jewish tradition, creation began at the foundation stone. It was also the site of the Ten Commandments and the Ark of the Covenant, and where all living creatures could be touched by God's power. Jacob slept at the foundation stone, and it's here that he dreamt of a ladder that connected all living things. During his reign, it is said Charlemagne fell so deeply in love with a German princess that he forgot to take care of himself and affairs of state. It was as if the typically bloodthirsty and well-groomed emperor had become bewitched by a supernatural force. Legend goes that a snake had gifted the king a diamond and he had it made into a ring for his princess. She became ill and not wanting Charlemagne to fall in love with another, she slipped the ring from her finger and put it under her tongue. After her death, Charlemagne refused to bury her body and continued worshipping her. While he was away one day, Archbishop Turpin entered Charlemagne's bedroom and removed the precious ring from beneath the corpse's tongue. When Charlemagne returned, he expressed disgust at the remains in his bed, which he didn't seem to recognize and ordered for the body to be buried. Oddly, he began showing an affinity for the Archbishop Turpin, who still had the ring in his possession. The Archbishop began to feel that something wasn't right about the piece of jewelry. Charlemagne wouldn't leave him alone, and they had to do everything together. Knowing something wasn't right about the ring, the Archbishop threw it into a lake. Next, according to legend, Charlemagne fell head over heels for the lake that the ring had been thrown into. In what would later become the city of Aix la Chapelle and his final resting place, he ordered a magnificent palace to be built on the banks of the lake. Despite all this, Charlemagne united much of Europe under his rule and spent the majority of his time in battle, earning his ruthless reputation. On December 23, 2015, the website Mysterious Universe posted something that left internet citizens scratching their heads. The image apparently showed an ancient tablet complete with rudimentary button-like keys that mysteriously resembled a 90s cell phone. The post claimed that the discovery had been made by archaeologists digging in the city of Fushle MC in the Austrian state of Salzburg. Although crucial details like the names of the archaeologists or any official comments from the dig were nowhere to be seen, 
The website also bolstered a conspiracy theory that the object was concrete evidence of alien life. The post quoted author Zakaria Sitchin, who claimed that the 800-year-old cell phone proved that an alien race known as the Anunnaki had come from Nibiru, the rumored planet X beyond Neptune, and introduced the Sumerian civilization of Mesopotamia to advanced technology. It might sound totally whack, and that's because it is. The 800-year-old cell phone was actually just a piece of art created by German sculptor Karl Weingartner, who specializes in replicas of ancient art. This particular piece, nicknamed Babylon Nokia, was created in 2012 to represent the evolution of information transfer from the ancient world to the present. When you look at these 3,000-year-old Egyptian hieroglyphs, which were discovered in the Pharaoh Seti I temple in Abydos, Egypt in 2016, what do you see? It might seem impossible, but they bear an uncanny resemblance to helicopters, airplanes, and other modern aircraft. As the mysterious writings, which became known as the helicopter hieroglyphs, baffled historians, conspiracies about how such futuristic technology ended up etched in stone spread like wildfire. To depict these things, the Egyptians must have laid eyes on them first, right? This could mean only one thing time travel. According to conspiracists, visitors from some far-flung advanced planet must have brought the details of the aircraft to the Egyptians. The extraterrestrials in question were also allegedly behind the building of the pyramids as well as other famous monuments like Stonehenge. However, skeptics have rightly pointed out the Egyptians recorded most events to proudly share their achievements. You'd have thought that being visited by aliens and informed about technology from the distant future would have been recorded somewhere other than on the roof of some forgotten tomb. So, is there a a logical explanation behind these baffling hieroglyphs? Up top. Maybe it's our obsession with the digital world that motivates us to find modern technology and ancient artifacts, but the internet was aflame with speculation over this Greek sculpture. The Steli, which belongs to the J. Paul Getty Museum in Malibu, California, dates back to about 100 BC, but it first gained online attention in 2014 for its depiction of what seemed to be an ancient laptop complete with two USB ports. Let's get the facts straight first. What exactly is this sculpture all about? It's actually a traditional funeral marker designed to depict the deceased individual, in this case, the reclining woman, in a vibrant way. The child in the sculpture is likely a slave, judging by her clothing, while the woman being immortalized in stone was likely of noble birth, based on her ornate jewelry. Still, that doesn't tell us why she's reaching out towards a laptop, except it isn't a laptop at all. According to some scholars, the woman is just touching the lid of a very shallow jewelry chest. There's an even more logical explanation though, which is that the laptop is actually a wax tablet, which the ancient Greeks used to write letters and messages. This common object can be found throughout Greek artwork and is often seen being used with a stylus. The goddess Athena was even depicted using one. So why the holes? Some have speculated that they may once have held perishable items, or even some sort of decorative wooden facade but exactly what graced this particular sculpture remains unclear. 